Hello, my name is Farish Kashfinishad. Please follow me on twitter.com slash Farish Kash and subscribe below for future tutorials. Today we're going over the basic RSpec tutorial part 2 covering Capybara. About this tutorial, Capybara uses outside in testing practices. We define the features that are outside of the application. Then we write our tests that fail, red. We then write our inside code that passes the test, green. This tutorial is more in depth than the first one as we will be changing code to make our test pass. Please check the notes below for links and references. If you did not understand the red green reference, I highly recommend that you see the first tutorial, which we'll have a link to below. Okay, the first thing we need to do is install the Capybara gem. So I'm already in the gem file. And basically all we have to do is add one line and then run bundle install. Now we run bundle install and Capybara is now installed. And from there, we're going to now generate the post controller so we can start doing our testing. Okay, as you can see, our spec has generated a post controller spec file and we're not going to use it. And the reason why we're not going to use it is because Capybara is a feature test suite. And what basically a feature is, is when you're testing the outside of the application, let's say as we're going to do here, you have a post view and you're going to click here, fill out a form here, that's considered to be a feature. So what we're going to do is actually make a features folder and make a separate testing file within that features folder. And after we do that, we're going to make a file called add posts spec.rb now that that's done we're going to go ahead and go into that file and start our tests okay so now we're going into the file and the first thing we have to point out here is that as mentioned earlier we're doing a feature and this feature will be adding posts view. And within that feature, we have a scenario. Should allow a user to add a post view. And when we add a post, the first thing that usually happens is we visit the new post path. And once we're there, we would fill in some parts of the post form. So we're going to fill in the title with my title then we're going to fill in body with my body then after we fill it in we're going to create a post so we usually have to click on something so we're going to click on the create posts
button. And now that we created the post, we would be going to the post page. And when we do, we should have some expectations of what we're going to see there. So expect page. content my title and then we should expect the page to have content my body and that should be it let's save this file and before I go on, there's a couple other things I need to do. I need to change. I just noticed an error. Feature should be lowercase. The other thing I need to do is require Rails helper. And now we're going to run our tests. And as I mentioned in the first tutorial, you don't just want to run RSpec. You want to run RSpec on the specific file. If you don't, you can have 20, 30, 40, 50, a couple hundred tests. And that's going to waste your time while you're waiting to get to the test that matters. So we're going to go into Spec, Features, and the actual spec file. Okay, so we got our first error, which is failure. Visit new post path, name error. Undefined local variable or method, new post path. And what this basically means is we haven't defined our routes in our routes file. And in fact, if I go into rake routes, you're gonna see you don't have any routes defined. So now we're gonna go into the routes file. And what we're going to do is right below this comment, we're going to add the post resources. Save that. And now we're going to run rake routes again. And now we have routes. So let's go ahead and run our test again. And we have a new error, and that error is visit new post path, action not found. So now it's time to go into the controller. And this is how this tutorial is different than the first tutorial. I was going over basic syntax, but I didn't make any actual code changes to make the test pass. In this situation, we are. And I'm going to define the new action here. And we're going to leave it at that. And I'm going to run RSpec again. And we have a new error. Missing template. So you saw that first we fixed a new action. And now we don't have a template for that action to go to, so let's go ahead and make that. And what we want to do is touch app views post new.html.erp. Now I use Vim. You can use edit any editor you would like to. The one thing I like to mention is if you're gonna try Vim and it's kind of scary and it's intimidating, I haven't been using Vim that much, maybe the last three months, the best thing you can do is remove any other editing programs on your computer. Otherwise, you're gonna fall back to them. Uh, you have to make it difficult for yourself to go back in order to stick with Vim. So now we're in here, we're gonna go, actually first we're gonna run our test again now that we did the new template file. 
And now we have a new error. Failure error to fill in title with my title. Capybara element not found. So let's start filling out this form. Form for, and this is a post. We're going to do. Now I've seen some other tutorials, they do Hamel and that could add added pressure. My recommendation is if you don't want to learn Hamble, but your tutorial shows you in Hamble, you could still do the form in ERB format and follow everything else as it would be, because everything else should follow Rails and Ruby. But somebody changing the form or using even simple form the gem can get intimidating because they are making things different than how you might have been taught to do. This is going to be title. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and this should be a text field for title. And I just need to mark end here for the loop. Now let's run our spec again. And we have a new error. First argument in form cannot be nil or empty. And what this basically means is uh, I defined a new action in the post controller, but I didn't define a instance variable for that new action. So we're going to go back into the post controller. And let's go ahead and do that. And for our new action would be post.new. Let's save that. Go down here and run our spec again. Okay, we're now a step further. Fill in body with my body, capybara element not found. And one thing I, li I like to mention here is, even though we say red, green, it's really a lot of reds till you get to the green. As long as you're moving forward with each red error, uh, you're doing okay. Uh, it's when you're stuck on the same error over and over again where it could become an issue but we are moving forward with each one and you can think of it in your head like i do i think of it weirdly as this is really green in the sense because i'm making a step forward but it is just a stream of reds till you get to that final green so we're going to go back into the new file and we're going to continue to fill out everything and I'm just adding the spacing for viewability. Uh, we're not going to style this form or anything like that. This is specifically for testing. Uh, there's nothing worthwhile in doing this because we aren't showing off the form. And it's going to look ugly regardless because there's no styling. There's no bootstrap. None of that involved. Go ahead, save this. Run our spec again. Create post. Another step forward. So I didn't make a create post button. That's next. And what we're going to do here is we're going to F submit and call it create post. And now we're going to run our spec again. New error. Click on create posts. Action not found. Okay. Another step forward. We need to work on the create action. So let's go back into the post controller. And start doing this. 
And one thing I like to add is because we are in the create action, I'm also going to go into the strong parameters and take care of that right now. And right here, I'm basically doing an if else statement that states, hey, if this save, go take it to the actual post file to show it. If not, re-render the form. Let's start all over. Uh, now I'm going to go into defining the strong params. to save this going back here and let's run our spec again let's see if this is the same error or a new one okay so we are in a new error error I haven't defined a show action which is kind of what happens with that redirect that post so let's go ahead go back into the post controller and do this and at post equals post dot find because we're looking for it based on the ID let's save that and run our spec again and as we scroll up to look at the error missing template so you can see there's a pattern starting to repeat here uh, need an action need a template for that action and you're going to go back and forth like that so let's go ahead and make that file And now that we made it, let's go ahead and run our spec again. A new error. Specs page to have content. So now we need to start filling out the page to get the data from the form and the database and display it on there. Let's go into the show file. And... I'm going to start with post.title. Run our spec again. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, okay. My mistake. This is should be at post. Let's run our spec again. Expect page to have content in my body. So we are at the final part of the test. We just did my title. So same thing, we go back in here. Run our spec again, and we are green from start to finish. We went through the post controller, testing out the views, testing out the actions with regards to those views, and now we know our views work as we want them to. Couple notes I like to mention here first. Uh, usually I do a flash action in the 
create section, but I didn't uh, due to time constraints. But it's the same concept. You would look for the flash notice on the page. Uh, the other thing is on the next tutorial, we're going to cover Factory Girl and using predefined data. And one more thing, uh, please follow me at Twitter, twitter.com slash Farish Cash. And please subscribe to the channel for future tutorials.